Welcome, this is a video review of the Mechanicum Thanatar Siege Automata by Forge World. So, let's start with an overview of what this is. So this is a uh, large, complex, multi-part resin model made by Forge World in the UK. Uh, the Thanatar is a heavy support choice um, for Mechanicum list in the Horus Heresy 30k era. Uh, you can't use this in Warhammer 40k. You can field it in all three of the different army types for Mechanicum, the Tagmata Omnissiah, the Legio Cybernetica, and the Ordo Reductor. So what does this kit cost? Uh, this kit currently retails for £72. Uh, on top of that, you need to allow for 12% postage and packaging in the UK and 15% for overseas orders. Uh, so adjust your expectations of final price accordingly. Uh, obviously, if you live near Nottingham or can access Nottingham in the UK, you can buy it at the Warhammer World store uh, and you won't incur any additional postage costs. Okay, um, so quick overview of the kit. Uh, so it's a large multi-part model. It's got around 60 to 70 parts. Uh, it's very poseable. It's quite complicated to build. Um, and let's just... Uh, start off by having a look around this model. So as you can see, um, I, there is a, a lot of posability here and a not huge number of different joints that can be manipulated. Um, I put this in quite a dynamic striding pose and that's about the limit of what the legs can actually achieve. Um, I don't think you can uh, make it to much, uh, much bigger stride than that. Uh, and as we turn this around, we can see the main armament of this uh, robot in the form of the Helix plasma motor and a twin-linked wrist-mounted Mauler pattern bolt cannon. Uh, the bolt cannon being fed by this large and rather impressive ammunition feed that connects to a hopper on the rear uh, of the battle automata. So in terms of assembly, um, you need to consider it's well worth pinning this. Uh, there's a lot of flat face bore joints um, in the construction of this, so they will require pinning if you want it to be a really sturdy model. I pinned uh, the ankles, uh, the knees, all the arms, and the two uh, waist and chest joints as well. I also did some additional pinning on the ammunition feed for the bolt cannon. There's two separate parts to this. Um, these don't come in a, put in, a, in a position ready to pose. You have to soften them either using a hot water immersion or a hairdryer so they're pliable to move. Uh, to, to, to mount them uh, separately without them attached together is quite difficult. So what I did and what I'd recommend is you first connect the two ammunition feeds together. So make them soft, link them together, stick them. I then pinned them to hold them really securely. I then went on to heat the whole assembly again um, and get it aligned with the, with the uh, ammo hopper and then the wrist uh, connector here. Um, that was the best approach I've found. Uh, I've made three of these with these bolt cannons on so far, so uh, that certainly has worked for me. Uh, when you are handling this ammunition feed, uh, do be careful if it's if you're heating it up because these fins um, or these ridges on the ammunition feed are very easily damaged uh, when they're softened and heated. Uh, another thing to think about with assembly, um, this is the Helix plasma motor here, very nicely detailed model. Uh, at the back here, this when you take it off the sprue, this is actually a shim attachment point here. Uh, this is completely flat and undetailed, and I didn't like the look of that. So I drilled a series of shallow holes um, to look like vents for the six plasma flasks that feed the um, mortar itself. As you can see, uh, I've not yet mounted my mortar. I've not yet fixed my mortar. I'm still deciding on the final pose, uh, and it also has this this front ring here as well, uh, and that you can actually cut this. Uh, a bit like petals of a flower, or well, perhaps a, a rather dangerous plasma spitting flower, uh, and open them to create the effect of uh, the gun opening as it launches a blob of plasma. 
So again, that's another nice posability feature of this particular model. Uh, let's just get a scale of size. So it's a, it's a big thing. So uh, here we have um, my uh, early crusade on as Centurion from the Iron Hands chapter. Uh, so this is a big, hefty marine model. Uh, and if we place them alongside the Thanatar, we can obviously see it is huge. Uh, another for uh, scaling against a, a normal human, here we have a Solar Auxilia Vexilla Bearer. Uh, and if we stand him alongside the um, Thanatar, it absolutely dwarfs a normal or even transhuman warrior. So, let's talk a bit about this in the game. Uh, the Thanatar is a heavy support choice for the Mechanic and Analysts, and as I said before, you can use it in all three of the um, varieties of that list. Tagmatter Omnissiah, Ordo Reductor, and Legio Cybernetica. Um, it's primarily designed as a fire support and indirect fire support unit. It's extremely tough. It has strength toughness 8, 4 wounds, 2 plus armor save, atomantic shielding, which also which grants a 5 plus invulnerable save at range and a 6 plus invulnerable save in close combat. However, you're never going to want to get this anywhere near close combat um, because to get the most out of it, you want to be fully utilizing its smaller bolt cannons, but particularly its Helix Plasma Mortar. The Helix Plasma Mortar has got a range of up to 48 inches. Uh, it has indirect fire, uh, so it can fire as barrage, strength eight, AP2 with a large blast, and it has a special rule called Plasma Wave, which forces enemy models to re-roll successful cover saves. Uh, and, it's, and that is how to get the most out of this, by stacking up all the abilities around the mortar. So the first thing you'll want to do uh, is to take the Enhanced Targeting Array. This grants you plus one ballistic skill for the robot, taking it up to five. But what it also does is it gives a minus one to any cover saves. So the mortar now not only forces a cover save reroll, it also is at minus one. The next step to really get the most out of these plasma mortars and the capabilities of the Thanatar in fire support is to link it into a gin skein uh, carried by an Arch Magos supported by a network of Cyber Ocularis. If you can get a Cyber Ocularis within 12 inches of an enemy unit and it doesn't need direct line of sight, you can then, if that can then link, link through to the Thanatar, uh, the Thanatar gets an additional bonus of minus one on cover saves from its attack. This stacks with the enhanced targeting array, so you've got a total of minus two cover saves and you're forcing a reroll. So standard cover gives no bonus, no benefit whatsoever. Uh, a ruin would be reduced to a six plus, and even as hardened fortification, uh, normally granting a three plus, will only give you a saving throw of five or a six. You can buy these in units of up to three. Um, they work as they, the, the three plasma mortars fire as a barrage weapon together uh, when firing in direct. Um, I've got two, and in the size of the games I play, uh, those two is a formidable unit. Uh, unit three would be terrifying, I think. Closing thoughts then. So the Mechanicum Thanatar Siege Automata uh, is a large and very impressive multi-part resin model. As I said, it's, tr it's got tremendous posability. Uh, if you were to look on around the internet uh, and on YouTube, there's lots of examples of wonderful poses that people have come up with for this particular model. Uh, so your imagination really is the limit there. Um, the price is £72, quite expensive, as, is all, as are all Forge World models. Uh, so, you know, take that as you will. Um, and its in-game performance is absolutely superb. So, as a Mechanicum player, I would highly recommend it. Thank you for watching.